Hello friends, welcome to Mathematics Lecture Series. We were discussing De Moivre's theorem, and uh, I told you the general expression of De Moivre's theorem. But I feel that I need to solve a question to help you understand. Okay, so in this lecture, we'll try to solve questions. I'll uh, try to solve two questions. Let's see if we'll be able to do it or not. So let's begin. So th there's this question that came in IITJ. That beautifully explains the use of De Moivre's theorem. So we have z is equal to this plus root three by two minus iota upon two to the power five. And they are asking then the real part of z or the imaginary part of z. What will be the value? How to do it? Very simple. Can you tell me? Can I write this expression in polar form? Okay, root three by two is nothing but if I want to write it in cos form, so this is nothing but cos thirty degree. Okay, this is nothing but cos of thirty degree, and this can be written as i sine thirty degree to the power five. The magnitude is one. Root three by two whole square. Plus one by two whole square is nothing but one. So I have skipped this one here. What about this one? Now I want to find the angle for which the cos is positive and the sine is negative. Cos is positive, sine is negative. So this is in the fourth quadrant. This angle lies in the fourth quadrant. So what will be the angle? This will be nothing but cos of three hundred and thirty degree. Cos of three hundred thirty degree is equal to root three by two, and this will be plus i sine three hundred and thirty degree whole to the power five. Again, the square. If if we find the magnitude of this complex number, this will be one. Okay. So what is the use of doing this? The use is very simple. Now I'll use the De Moivre's theorem. So De Moivre's theorem says that z to the power n is nothing but uh, you bring this power in the cos. So this will become cos one fifty degree plus i sine one fifty degree plus this will become cos three thirty degree into five will be uh, I think sixteen hundred and fifty. Okay, sixteen hundred and fifty. Let's see. Hopefully, I have multiplied it correctly. Sixteen hundred and fifty. What next? Cos one fifty plus i sine one fifty. Cos of one fifty degree is. Cos of one fifty degree is. Root three by minus root three by two. Okay, and sine of one fifty degree is half. So this is the final expression that you get by simplification. What about this one? Cos of sixteen hundred and fifty degree. So we have to see it in terms of multiples of three sixty. Three sixty into four is one four four zero, and add to it two hundred and ten degree. So you will get sixteen hundred fifty. So this is essentially cos two hundred and ten plus i sine two hundred and ten. Okay. And cos two hundred and ten is nothing but cos one eighty plus cos one eighty plus thirty degree. Cos one eighty plus thirty degree is nothing but minus root three by two. And sine one eighty plus thirty degree is nothing but minus half. So minus root three by two plus i by two. So you can clearly see i by two. This cancels out. And finally, what you get minus root three. So this expression can be simplified as minus root three. So the real part of expression is negative, and the imaginary part of expression is zero. Okay, very simple thing. Let us take another example. This is a very. Uh, Important question. 
there is the question okay so this is the question question is we have to solve for k is equal to 1 to 6 sine 2 pi k upon 7 minus i cos 2 pi k upon 7 <coughs> Now see this is sine theta minus i cos theta and we know that for a polar representation it is cos theta plus i sine theta. So what to do? If I take a minus i common outside, so this will become, I am taking it outside, <coughs> so this will become cos of 2 pi k upon 7 and this will become 1 upon i sine of 2 pi k upon 7 okay this minus 1 can be written as i square i can replace this with i square so this will become let us this let us assume this whole thing is uh, a so cos a plus 1 i will cancel out i times sin a summation okay so this is a constant so I can bring it outside of summation so minus i summation cos a plus i sin a and this is starting from k is equal to 1 to 6 now we know that if we want to make it if you remember if I if I want to find the seventh root of unity if z is equal to 1 and if I ask you what will be z to the power 1 by 7 so what you will do you will say z to the power 1 by 7 will be nothing but using de Moivre's theorem 2 pi 2 pi k upon 7 plus i sine 2 pi k upon 7 and the value of k will be start starting from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 there will be no 7, these are 7 roots. Okay, so just see the expression. We have minus i. This is starting from 1 to 6. And we have the same thing. 2 pi k by 7 plus i sine 2 pi k by 7. So if I start it with 0, then I will get all the roots of unity. But for that, I have to subtract one thing uh, the value of k is equal to 0 which is nothing but 1 okay cos 2 pi into 0 upon 7 i sin 2 pi into 0 upon 7. okay so I have to subtract it so this will be minus i this is nothing but sum of the roots this is nothing but sum of the roots of sum of the seventh roots of unity okay and minus 1 now what will be the sum of 7th roots of unity this, that is equal to 0 I have covered this in a in a different lecture how to find the sum of roots of a polynomial the sum of roots of any polynomial is very simple to find you can view that lecture so this is 0 minus 1 so minus i into minus 1 is nothing but i so final answer is i okay so stay tuned time is running out we'll meet in the next video lecture with a new topic Thanks for watching.